Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 713 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. This is a tricky section. Uh, there's a lot of subtle things going on here that I think you're going to miss on the first reading, and you may have missed in you know whatever lecture you've already heard on this. Um, to, to begin, let's forget that we knew Faraday's law, Faraday's law which is, it doesn't exist to us. Okay. Um, the situation we have here is we have a uniform magnetic field pointing into the page, uh, but only in a certain region. And then we have this wire rectangular loop. Um, I forgot to label this. The height is H. And the distance it's embedded into the area is S. That'll be important later, not now. Okay. Um, this wire loop is traveling at constant velocity um, this direction, velocity V. Uh, there's obviously somebody pulling on it to make it move. And and the, the question is, what's the EMF? What What is the force that's driving current through this loop? And, and the answer is that it's the magnetic force. And to understand why, let's, let's draw some um, forces uh, due to the, the magnetic field interacting with the charges. So here the magnetic field is pointing to the page and the velocity at every single point along here is pointing to the right. So we're gonna get a force that's a force per unit charge that's, that's uniform for every single point within the loop, within the magnetic field. And that's QV cross B. You know, V cross B will give you a force pointing up. So everywhere there's a force uh, pointing up everywhere. And um, because the charge isn't going to leave the loop, um, the only place where that force actually translates to the EMF. Remember EMF is um, EMF is equal to the integral of the force per unit charge dot the, the, uh, the, the infinitesimal you know, length unit. It's a path integral. So over here the force is perpendicular. Um, the force per unit charge is perpendicular to the path. Right, and so that's going to give us a zero. These two components don't contribute anything, but here the force is directly aligned, and so the EMF will be just equal to the force, uh, which is QV cross B, which is V B, the velocity times the magnetic field B, and the distance it travels is H. Okay, so V B H is our EMF, and this is an EMF just like a battery would provide or anything else that will actually drive current through the resistor. Okay, uh, at this point you should be wondering. Okay, so we know that magnetic fields don't do any work. And indeed, here, the forces are all perpendicular to the velocity of the charges. Or so it seems, right? Uh, but the magnetic force, because of you know the, the, Lorentz, the Lorentz force law, is perpendicular because of the cross product with the velocity. And so the magnetic field does no work. And yet, we are powering a current to warm up that resistor. There's work being done. What's causing the work? Where is the work coming from? And the answer is, it has to be from the force of that pole to keep that, that, uh, that loop traveling at the velocity v. Okay, so let's calculate um, what that force of that pole is equal to, which must equal the horizontal component of the magnetic field. But here all the magnetic fields are pointing up. Here we have a force to the right. Something is not right here. So what we need to do is change how we're looking at this problem. Okay, so I'm going to make this big diagram here. Everything's moving to the right at the velocity v because of the the EMF that the, the the magnetic field is generating. There's a current flowing through, and so actually the charges aren't just sitting still along the wire and moving with the wire. They're actually traveling along the wire and moving with the wire. Over here, that tends to increase the velocity. Over here, it decreases the velocity. But inside of here, it causes it to travel at an angle. So let's draw that. So it actually travels up at an angle. We'll call that w. That's the actual velocity of the charged particles, okay? And so we have this U component that's going to be important, okay? So this is the vertical component of the velocity, that's the horizontal component of the velocity, same for anything anywhere in this loop. Um, and then we have the, um, the, the sum total. Okay, now, um, the force of the magnetic field is actually going to be perpendicular to this vector, not this vector, but this vector. And so it's gonna actually not point straight up, but point a little bit to the left, okay? So let's label this angle here, theta. These are right angles, okay? And this force vector can, can break down into two, a horizontal component and a vertical component. Okay, this is the actual force due to magnet. Okay? And this horizontal component has to exactly cancel out with the force of the pull 
Otherwise, there'd be an acceleration, which you know we, we're assuming that we have constant velocity here. All right, so um, the force of the pull has to be equal to this part of the magnetic field. Okay, so let's calculate things out. Um, so this component of the magnetic field, so this is just BW, right? The horizontal component here is not BW, it is, or WB, it's UB, and this is VB, okay? This is WB, okay, Warner Brothers. Um, so the horizontal is UB, I got this, yes, that's correct, okay, and the vertical is VB. Okay, and these, this, this component of the vector is perpendicular to u, this component of the vector is perpendicular to v. Okay, and um, I feel like the sizes are wrong, but I'm not too concerned about that. I, I think um, it has more to do with the fact that this isn't 90 degrees than anything else. Okay, the, um, so then the EMF, and, and we're going to consider EMF as if the pole was the one pushing the charges, and, and uh, the reason why we're going to consider that is let's say you had like like dirt or something like that. Let's say you had balls, right, on the floor. You had a bunch of balls lying on the floor, stacked on top of each other. And you had like a, a wedge, and you pushed that wedge and lifted the balls up, right? Is the wedge doing the work? And the answer is, well, really it's the guy pushing the thing. So we're going to consider this force of the pole and the geometry of the loop to be the thing actually doing the work, not the magnetic field directly. Okay, so force pole. So the EMF is going to be the integral of the force of the pole dot the direction of the loop, okay? And so the force of the pole is the UB. That's just UB. Well, and how far did they go? Um, they didn't go straight up. Um, they actually had to go at an angle, so the distance they traveled was not H, but H over cosine theta, the hypotenuse. So H over cosine theta is the distance they traveled. Okay, and it's, it's not, um, um, the dot product is not exactly, you know, these are not aligned with each other anymore. Okay, you can tell here. So the dot product would give you cosine of theta minus 90. So we just use sine theta, it's equal to theta, uh, cosine of 90 minus theta. And so now we have uh, UBH uh, tangent of theta. Well, that's just opposite over adjacent. So what's opposite? V over U. So that's U, B, H, V over U. U's cancel, and you get V, B, H. That's the EMF we calculate. That's the EMF we calculate with our naive model. This is the EMF we calculate if we're looking at the force of the pole as pulling the, the particles along. And so we are left to assume that... Um, it's not the magnetic field doing the work, it's the force of the pole doing the work. This is how much the force of the pole is causing those charges to move. The magnetic field is just, just playing at the, um, as if it were a wedge. It's, only, it's not actually doing any work, it's just, a, it's just a, it's the guy pushing the wedge that causes the work to happen. So, uh, next we're going to cover um, uh, magnetic flux and how that, how that uh, interacts with the EMF. And uh, after that it's example four and then we will talk about Faraday's Law. So thanks for your time. Bye.